of universities within late capitalism and neoliberal warfare <laughs> and about what you think about NYU or other <laughs> enormous private universities that are amongst the largest landowners in this yeah. city. I'm, I'm not well traveled at all, but I do know that in this city, the largest landowners are not billionaires. They're not investors. They're not, they're not people investing in empty apartments. They're universities <laughs> and they're private research universities, New York University and Columbia. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know what you think about that. No, you are absolutely right. It's important. Um, um, NYU and Columbia has been not only now, but always very important uh, real estate agents in the city, shaping the city, shaping the market, also the real estate market with their undertakings. But uh, in New York, particularly, uh, the presence of hedge funds, equity funds, merged with the university. The university is not pure university. The university is also part of this financial circuit. Who owns the university today? It, and who owns real estate today? They are not anymore individual owners of buildings, which was the traditional, the traditional real estate in New York, is all of these buildings, including the ones that are managed by the university, are owned by um, investment funds, globalized investment funds. And now they are entering also into the rental sector and, and buying uh, all the subprime houses, bunches of subprime houses, especially in states like California, this is huge today, and renew them and um, renting them out, of course, with the expectation of the appreciation of value over time after the crack <laughs> is over, the crash is over. And this is not only in the US, this is happening also in Germany. Um, hedge funds and investment funds had bought large tranches of public housing in uh, Eastern Germany, in places that lost completely their industrial jobs, so they were completely empty. They bought for nothing this real estate because, and they bought for nothing and then waiting for appreciation afterwards. And this is the new, so some, some of the agents that provoked the subprime crisis now are organizing investment funds to buy the subprime empty buildings. This is what is happening now. So it's, again, another circle of, of uh, um, and New York is especially important for them. Having said that, it's incredible on how much you have still in New York some part of the stabilized rent stock and people living here and how much you have still public housing in New York. And this, of course, has to do with a lot of struggle of New Yorkers <laughs> for decades here, resisting to that. This is very important. But at the same time, you see that this has been dismantled, especially because all the schemes of rent protection that we had in New York from the 70s and the schemes of affordable housing, they had a, a, a deadline of 30 years and they are finishing now. So I think the future is very, very worrying. What's going to happen with that? And it's very interesting. When I started to work on that, my main question was, but I cannot understand. 
why an uh, investment fund uh, will be owner of thousands of apartments in Dubai, in New York, in Moscow, in Rio, in Sao Paulo? What are they going to do with that? Who going to rent those things? Who going to buy those things? It's not important. Because for the financial circuit, the use is not important. It's an asset. It has to be on the books in order to leverage credit. So it's absolutely irrelevant if nobody lives there. So I think this is very important for us to understand because all this empty stock, you would assume that if you have so much empty stock, the prices will go down, everybody will get in, and everybody will be happy forever. No. <laughs> no, the prices don't go down, they won't be sold, 